station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I am ready for the event. Larry King now. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Larry King. How do you hear me? I hear you good, sir. How do you hear me? I hear you fine. Stop with the sir, Scott. Call me Larry. <laughs> you you orbit the Earth sixteen times a day. Where, where are you got? Where are you guys right now? You know, I I was just looking at it, and then uh, something came up here. We are. Um... We are right over Australia, and it's the uh, the middle of the night there right now. What what Scott is your average day like? Do you live like, <clears throat> do you work like on Eastern time to get up at eight o'clock? Do you work all day? Sleep at eleven p.m. What's your day like? So we uh, we work on uh, most of the time, almost all the time, on, on Greenwich Mean Time. So we get up at about 6 or 7 in the morning, Greenwich Time, so the time that uh, a lot of Europe is on. And then we go to sleep at uh, 10 to 11 o'clock at night, again, on that uh, European time. And that's a good compromise uh, because we have a bunch of different control centers around the world that uh, that we interact with in Moscow, Japan, uh, the U.S., in uh, Germany, Huntsville, Alabama. So being on that Greenwich time was probably the best compromise we could have. How many are on the ship right now? Well, right now there are six of us. There are uh, three Russian cosmonauts, a uh, an astronaut from Japan, and uh, two American astronauts, obviously, you know, one of those being myself. And in uh, two weeks from today, we're going to get uh, three more people on board, a uh, another Russian, a, a Kazakh, and... Uh, and a uh, first astronaut from Denmark, so it's uh, we're going to be pretty full here. Everybody get along well? Yeah, we get along great. Um, you know, this is an international program. It's one of the great things about this uh, this space station program is that it was done with a uh, very strong international partnership. Um, you know, although we have, you know, the, the U.S., what's called the U.S. operational segment, which uh, is the U.S. and our other uh, international partners, and then the Russian segment. So we uh, do work uh, some of the time independently, but we have, you know, two of the Russian cosmonauts doing some medical tests here right now in the U.S. laboratory module. And we share just about any, everything. And they're, uh, you know, the cosmonauts and the other inter international astronauts are, are great friends and uh, great partners for us. You, you've got a, you're up there 145 days. You're going to be up 356. What's the physical toll on you? You know, um, we have a good exercise program up here. Uh, so overall, physically, uh, at least the stuff I can, uh, you know, I could see and how I feel is uh, is pretty good. You know, but. Part of the reason why we're up here for, for so long is we're studying other things, the things you can't see, like uh, bone loss, the effects on, uh, on our vision, the effects of, you know, in the case of this study with my brother and I, the, the effects of radiation on us at a, a, a genetic level. So, you know, even though I've been up here for a long time, I'll be up here for, uh, you know, a little while longer, I feel good. But, uh, you know, there are other effects that we need to, to, to study as I go along and, uh, and continue to study when I get back. It'll be interesting to check you and your brother out, won't it, since you're identical twins. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a good op opportunity on a kind of an anecdotal level, you know, when you only have one sample group, uh, to get some information on, on areas that perhaps need investigating further. You know, as identical twins, our genetics are almost identical, and there are uh, impacts on us from this uh, microgravity environment and the uh, the radiation environment on us at a, a genetic level. So hopefully we'll learn things uh, uh, about those effects that we can then uh, study even further. Uh, you recently participated in, a, <clears throat> understand, a new first for space travel. What is VEG or VEG-1? Oh, the it's a the uh, the veggie experiment was a uh, 
an experiment to see how well we could grow food in space, and uh, we'd done that before up here. Uh, but in this case, we were allowed to eat some of it. So uh, the last time we did it, all of the, the, the vegetables went to the ground, and this time we were allowed to eat uh, half of it. And that was great. It, uh, you know, tasted good. It's great to have fresh vegetables. And, you know, if we want to go to Mars someday and, uh, you know, live and work in places that don't have the type of resupply we get uh, on the space station, we're going to have to know how to do that. How do experiments that you conduct affect us here on Earth? So we have, uh, you know, over 400 different experiments going on here throughout the year I'm here. And some of those are experiments that, uh, you know, look at ways uh, to allow us to explore further uh, from the Earth. But some of them do are probably about 30 percent of them are, are ways to improve life on Earth. For instance, we recently had a... Uh, a bunch of rodents uh, up here where we were doing some experiments that were would be a uh, potentially uh, critical to designing some new drugs for certain type of diseases like uh, you know bone loss and and uh, muscle wasting uh, kind of diseases there are some other drugs that have been developed based on space station research uh, tomorrow we got some combustion uh, experiments going on in the US laboratory module that are uh, you know looking at ways to improve combustion efficiency um, you know, but I like to think, you know, the space program and how it's, uh, you know, allowed us to, uh, you know, improve our ability to uh, fly satellites into orbit and uh, communicate with space vehicles. If you look at how we live our lives today, uh, most of, of what we do from a technology standpoint relies on, you know, space-based technology. You recently urged lawmakers to restore full funding to NASA's commercial crew program. Is that going to be a problem? Well, you know, you know, it's. Uh, I guess it's the president's job to, uh, you know, offer a budget and uh, and Congress uh, approves it or, or or doesn't or changes it. Um, you know, for for us. We need a certain amount of money to to fly, uh, you know, these commercial crew vehicles on a certain schedule. And, uh, you know, if we don't get the uh, the amount of money we're asking for, we're probably not going to be able to meet that schedule, which means, you know, for the space station program, we're going to have to, you know, further our contract with the Russians uh, to get crews uh, up here. So I don't, I don't know if it'll happen. I hope it happens. I hope we get the, the money uh, we need so we can you know, continue to, to build two, uh, two vehicles and uh, do it on the schedule that, that we need to support um, our exploration goals. Are you working all the time? You know, we work a lot up here. We work probably from, uh, you know, the time we wake up where we're kind of looking at our schedule throughout the, you know, see what we're going to do that day and doing any uh, uh, preparation for some of the activities we have to do. And then, you know, at night, it's kind of like when a lot of people go home, you know, they check their email. But our workday goes from probably about 7 in the morning until 7 in the evening. And then with a few hours for some, uh, you know, kind of offline email type activities, pretty soon it's time to go to sleep. Get to watch movies or something? You have, you have fun? What kind of fun do you have? You know, we, uh, yeah, we watch movies, we watch television shows. Recently, you know, we've been trying to rewatch at least Chell Lindgren and I, uh, with uh, re-watching Breaking Bad and, uh, you know, exposing <laughs> our Japanese colleague uh, to it. Um, and he's enjoying it, actually. But, uh, yeah, we watch some television shows, read books, watch movies. Uh, watch the movies generally like one time on the weekend. Uh, all six of us will get together and watch a movie. Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your service to this country. Best of luck in the rest of the mission. And my pleasure, sir. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Larry King Now portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Yahoo Global News. Can you do a standby and just let people know I'm doing this? Station, this is Katie Couric with Yahoo News. How do you hear me? 
Hi, Katie. I hear you loud and clear. How me? Fantastic. Good. I'm excited to talk to you, Scott. So we're just going to do the intro and then we'll be ready to go, okay? Okay, sounds good. It's a modern space odyssey, but this one in 2015. I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to Yahoo News. Some of us like to post pictures of our kids, our desserts, our hydrangeas on Instagram. Guilty. But Captain Scott Kelly might have us all beat for the coolest Instagram feed in the universe, literally. He's 145 days into his record-breaking year in space mission with NASA and has been keeping amazing records for us back here on Earth. Check out this Rothko-esque sunset he tweeted on Monday. Here's the shot he took of the Himalayan mountains looking like funnel cakes. And then there's this breathtaking view of the northern lights at sunrise. Scott is with us now from the International Space Station. Hi, Scott. Thanks so much for talking with us. Hi, Katie. It's uh, my pleasure, and welcome aboard the International Space Station. Well, thank you very much. Now, I know the primary purpose of your mission is to determine the effects a year in space has on an astronaut like you. You've been there for almost five months, so how are you feeling? You know, I feel pretty good. Um, you know, five months is a long time to be up here, and I have a long time, uh, long ways to go. But we have uh, great people helping us take care of ourselves. Uh, you know, those folks on the ground that support us. We got good exercise equipment. Um, so as far as, you know, how I feel, I feel great. You know, there's certain things we need to, to continue to study and, uh, you know, results that we won't get until I, uh, I get back on the ground. But so far, so good. What do you do all day long, Scott? Can you give us sort of a typical day in the life on the International Space Station? So there's no, uh, you know, all the days are different, which makes it uh, pretty interesting. Um, we do a lot of science here. While I'm here, we'll do over 400 different experiments. And, uh, you know, sometimes your days might be devoted to a lot of science. Uh, this morning I was doing ex an experiment called Spheres that uses these uh, small satellites and control al algorithms that, uh, you know, try to understand how to, how to control satellites in space. Um, you know, the other crew members are doing, uh, right now the two Russian cosmonauts are doing some medical tests on their eyes in the U.S. laboratory module. Sometimes you're fixing things. Um, like maybe the carbon dioxide removal system is a piece of hardware we had worked on a few months ago that was pretty extensive. Um, on Monday, we have a, a Japanese cargo ship coming, so we'll be uh, grabbing that. So it's a combination of science, uh, maintenance, and uh, you know, general housekeeping, and then occasionally, you know, robotics activities or you know, a spacewalk you might get to do. I know that there are six of you up there, so you literally can have your space, so to speak. But how are you getting along? How much do you interact with the others who are with you? So we, we get along great. The space station is, you know, functionally separated in two halves. There's the Russian segment, and then there's the U.S. operational segment, which consists of the U.S. modules and a module from... Uh, from Japan, which I'm currently in, uh, and there's one up there, another Japanese module, module from uh, ESA, the European Space Agency. So in some respects, we work in a kind of a segmented, segmented way most of the time. We have the U.S. and other partner astronauts on one side and the Russians on the other. But, uh, you know, practically speaking, we're all one crew. We get along great. You know, I don't look at the Russian, my Russian colleagues really any different than I do the other uh, astronauts on board. Um, you know, it really is a, uh, a mutual uh, relationship we have up here and one that's, you know, based on us having to trust each other. You know, we rely on each other literally for our lives. So it's, uh, it's really, uh, you know, one of the great things about this program. How do, do they all speak English? How do you all communicate? 
Uh, yeah, they uh, they speak English. We speak, you know, they speak some English. They speak some Russian. Generally, their English is better than our Russian. So uh, most of the time on the space station, we uh, we speak English, but we do speak Russian in the in the Soyuz and uh, you know during some uh, other you know special activities. But most of the time, it's English. Now, tell me about sort of your basic quality of life. Like, how do you do laundry? How what is the food like? You're not still drinking Tang and eating freeze-dried food, I imagine. So what about sort of the day-to-day -day kind of creature comforts? Yeah, that's a good question. So we don't do laundry because, you know, that requires a lot of water, and water's at a premium up here. Um, you know, plus it'd be pretty complicated, I think, to make a space washer, although I guess you can do it. So we generally throw our clothes out. I think I've been wearing these pair of pants for about two months. Um, I won't tell oh, you how long I've been wearing the other things oh, that I'm. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, we generally throw our <laughs> we generally throw our clothes away. Our water is actually made from uh, our urine and condensate that's uh, taken out of the atmosphere. Most most of it is made that way um, because water is very uh, very valuable up here and uh, you know pretty precious commodity. But the water is very good quality. It's. Uh, Probably cleaner than what comes out of uh, my faucet, or maybe even maybe even your faucet there in the in the Northeast. Uh, and then food is a lot like camping food. Uh, for one, it, you know, we we add water to it, which makes it again lighter uh, to fly it into space. And some of it's like the uh, military style MREs, and uh, you know, a little bit of it's right. off the shelf. But it's uh, you know. It's, it's a pretty harsh environment, but we, we, we get used to it after a while. It's amazing what you can get used to. Someone asked on Twitter, do you experience more dreams than usual up there? You know, I was asked about dreaming in space on my last flight, and I really couldn't remember whether I had, you know, Earth dreams when I was in space or space dreams. So this time I, I started writing them down. And, uh, you know, what I've noticed, although I, I stopped a few months ago because it was somewhat of a burden, it kind of got me into a situation where I kind of remember them more because I was writing them down for a while. And it seems like in the beginning of my flight, the space dreams were rare. And now, you know, almost 150 days into it, the Earth dreams are more of the rare ones. You, I know, have been keeping up with the real world. You're very uh, adept at social media, Scott. I know President Obama tweeted at you, loving the photos. Do you ever look out the window and just freak out? Julia Louis-Dreyfus, I know, tweeted at you a couple of months ago, wanted to know if you were watching Veep. Um, well, let me ask you the answer to both of those questions. Do you freak out, and are you watching Veep? I mean, what do you do for fun, Scott? You know, I... Uh yeah, I'm not a freak out kind of guy, but uh, that was great to get that question from the president and, and actually all the questions from, uh, you know, all the people that are interested in this program. I tried to watch Veep. Um, it's kind of, I don't really watch many series up here, so I haven't gotten into it yet, um, but I hope to. I actually like the show. I think it's very well done, but uh, haven't been watching it on a regular basis. Um, I'm a big Seinfeld fan, so we occasionally we'll watch Seinfeld. We have uh, all the episodes up here. But, uh, you know, the other stuff we do for fun is, uh, you know, like the social media stuff for me is fun because you get real feedback from the people that are, you know, looking at the pictures or listening what you have to say. Uh, we do email, talk on the phone, read a little bit. So it's, uh, it's not bad. I know one of the reasons, Scott, you were picked is because you, you have a twin brother, an identical twin brother, Mark Kelly, who, of course, uh, I know as well. Um, do you ever wish that he was the one up there and you could be the one back here on Earth? Um, no, not really. Um, you know, that's not the type of thing I would I would ever even think about because it really wasn't, uh, you know, practical. Uh, you know, his situation was, was such that when this one year of flight came along, he had already, you know, he'd already retired from NASA and... Uh, so, uh, you know, it just wasn't a practical thing. Um, you know, I do envy some of the stuff he gets to do. So, you know, now occasionally he'll send me a picture of his food or something. And that's, uh, you know, I, at those times when I'm eating something brown in a bag, I envy the, you know, steak he's sending me a picture of. <laughs>